how do we overcome self-sabotage? If you feel this way, we are going to be talking about this in today's video. And I want to start with a message that I received from a woman that says, Hey, I follow good habits for four or five days. Then I stop caring and decide to have one night of stuffing myself. After that, it's so hard to get back on track. Send help. If you feel this way, if you feel like you're in this cycle of doing really good and then sabotaging it, whether it's for a few days, for a few hours, for a few minutes at a time, you're in the right place and let's talk about it. First, we need to talk about what self-sabotage is because it's kind of one of those words that maybe could have a few different meanings. And so I want to give you the definition of self-sabotage and it's this. You actively or passively take steps to stop yourself from reaching your goal. So I want to give you a little example, a little story. I am famous, I don't know why, for doing this with my finances. I have this big vision of having the best budget ever or the best financial situation and tracking every dollar and making sure it all goes the right, the right place. And I do good for a little bit or in my mind, I do good, right? There are a couple of ways that we do this. We either create a perfect scenario in our mind and say, we'll, we'll do it at some point, And then we sabotage it by never actually doing it. Or we do it. We follow the plan that we set out for ourselves. And then within a few days, a few hours, whatever it is, whenever life comes in and something happens that isn't conducive to reaching your goal, we sabotage it. And I have done that so much with finances. I've done it with food and wellness and diet and all of that. So if you're feeling that today, I want you to know you're in the right spot. And I want to talk about why do we self-sabotage? And it is one thing. It's fear. It's out of fear. Fear for so many different reasons. Maybe you're fear, maybe you fear failure. Okay? So that's probably the most common one that we believe, right? Or we feel, I'm going to fail at this again, or I can't be perfect at this, or we have this fear of failure. Maybe you have a fear of success. Sometimes it's a little bit scary to succeed because what if you fail again, right? So you're like scared to succeed to keep it up. And that could be, you know, I talked a little bit about finances. That's something like, what if I do succeed? I've got to keep this level up. Um, and so the same thing with diet and exercise. What if I am successful? I've got to keep up what I'm doing and that's scary. And so then the fear maybe of failure comes in. Maybe we're fearful of judgment. Okay. So especially with weight loss and dieting, maybe we're scared that people will judge wherever we are, wherever we go. Maybe we lose weight and there's judgments. Maybe we gain weight. There's judgments. We're scared of being judged by others. The last one is feeling like we are not worthy or deserving of the outcome that we want. So we haven't created that kind of self-esteem in ourselves that we are worthy of receiving that outcome. I have three steps for you today to help you overcome self-sabotage. Number one is to become aware and accept 100% responsibility. I have three steps for you today to help you overcome self-sabotage. The first one is a little bit of tough love, but we all need it. And it is to become aware of what you're doing and accept 100% responsibility. No more blaming anyone or anything else. Take the responsibility and recognize that it is you, me, that is responsible for the outcome that we want. Step number two is to recognize that food and our relationship with food and wellness is revolving. Let me give you a little example. I don't know what it was, but I would always be in this start and stop mode with food. It was always Monday through Friday. I was good. Kind of like what this woman shared before about how she would follow the good habits for four or five days before. Monday through Friday, I'd be good for the most part. I mean, maybe I'd have some weeks where like, Monday, I'd be good. And then I'd ruin it. But I would look at it as Monday through Friday was the good parts of the week. And then the weekend was whatever I wanted. And Sunday especially was more of whatever I wanted because Monday was coming 
and it was back to perfect. And I had to have everything perfect on Monday. But if I didn't have like all the groceries on Saturday or whatever, I was like, whatever, I'll just, I'll wait until Monday to start again. And it was this stop and start thing. And I, and I want to know, do you do this where you start and stop with food? You're, you binge and then you start over on Monday or next week or next month or New Year's or whatever it is. And it's this start and stop. And what I want you to do is shift your mindset from the start and stop to the revolving. Food will revolve. So if you have a bad meal, I don't like the word bad, but if you had a a binge or you had a situation where you overdid it, it's not about waiting to start over again. It's just recognizing that that happened. We let it, we let it happen and we move on and we keep going. So we keep allowing food to be this revolving part of our life rather than start and stop. And that leads me to my next step, which is number three, to insert grace, okay? No matter what happens, you are on a journey and you are learning and no matter where you're starting with your relationship with food and dieting and your wellness and all of the things that you're wanting to accomplish with your health and wellness, we need to insert grace. We need to recognize that we're learning and I always like to look at it, you either succeed or you learn, right? So you either make that progress step forward in the way that you want it or you learn how to do it next time or how to do it for um, how to fix it for that time. And so I want you to remember, insert grace everywhere you can. No going back to those fears that we talked about. That's where the self-sabotage comes in. Insert grace and recognize that you are worthy and deserving of the outcome that you want and give yourself grace throughout the whole process. Okay. I have an action step for you today. I want you to go sit down for a minute and write out your self-sabotaging behaviors and patterns. Take a minute to think about what it is you do. Do you find yourself with start and stop with food? Do you, or do you revolve with food? Do you find yourself doing a few days on, a few days off? Do you find yourself starting the morning really good and by the evening you've already sabotaged yourself? I want you to spend a minute to sit down and write out those behaviors and see if any patterns come up. That's all. You don't need to solve anything. I just want you to start paying attention to it and watch for those patterns. So here are the three steps again. One, become aware and accept full responsibility for your actions and your outcomes. Number two, remember that food is revolving. It is not a start and stop. It is constant and pick yourself up when you fall, keep going. And number three, insert grace everywhere you can. If you struggle with your relationship with food, dieting, emotional eating, I have a free course called Overcome Emotional Eating, and we help you work through those patterns of emotions that may lead you to those self-sabotaging behaviors. You can sign up for that for free in the description or at the link in my profile. And if you liked this video, please share it with anyone you think it could benefit. I will see you in another video.